Hi folks, welcome back to the shop. Today I want to go over my tool bag setup for this Vito Pro Pack TP XXL bag. Now before I do that, I ask that you please like, comment, and subscribe. Taking all those actions help me continue to bring content to you for this channel. Now, before I go over this tool bag setup, I want to say that, you know, there's been some thought given into this. This tool bag is uh, an all-arounder bag. The idea is to show up and it has roughly 75 to 80 percent of the tools that you need and you're not running back to the truck or the van to uh, get other tools. So uh, you come in and have most of what you might need uh, on the job. So that's what this setup reflects. Now, I've done a tool bag setup for a Vito Pro Pack Tech MCT and a Tech LC before, uh, but this is my most current setup on this TPXXL, and I'll explain why I think this really is one of the best bags that uh, Vito puts out. So with that, let's get into the bag. All right, let's get into the loadout and the setup of this uh, Vito ProPack TPXXL bag. I'm going to start with one side of the bag here. Um, first off, I have, just to get this out of the way here, I have this uh, terry cloth here, just a cloth to wipe off tools, any dirt that comes up on the job. Got a pair of safety glasses here. These are Carhartt safety glasses. They've tested out really well. They work really, really good, fit well. And let's start here on the side. I've got a pair of gloves, mechanics gloves that I like. It has a glove clip that goes on the D-ring here. You take these gloves off. I like these because there's no Velcro straps, so the gloves go on and off fast. I don't have to mess with the strap. I've got a magnetizer, demagnetizer here from Klein, and that is very handy to uh, magnetize and demagnetize your screwdrivers. All you do is you just run your screwdrivers through the uh, tip here, right? This end, right? Or you run it through the other end to demagnetize. So that works out great. Uh, let's see. I've got a tape measure here. This is a Kamalon tape measure. I do like this. Uh, I keep a sh I used to keep a longer tape measure. I keep a shorter one now. Uh, just lighter weight. Find that I'm usually measuring something at shorter distances. If you look at this tape, you'll see it's got fractions on the bottom of the tape. Right? If you don't like fractions, you want the traditional tape measure, just look at the top. They're not there. It auto locks. Any tape measure I use these days, auto locks. Uh, if it doesn't have the feature, I'm not using it. Got that with the Stanley Fat Max years ago. I really liked it. So we have bits here. This is just a quick, easy way for me to keep standard bits on the outside. I've got, looks like standard quarter inch here, square, some Torx, Phillips. You know, quick way to access bits on the outside of the bag, so I'm not having to go in the bag. I've tried out this bit holder. I've had it on here for a while now, but this bit holder is sort of, uh, you know, if you push down on it, you might have seen these somewhere, but if you push down, your bits fall out. That's why I only have one, because I'm just trying to see how it goes. Got a Milwaukee bit holder there, again, so that's for easy access. There's a pouch here in the bottom. Let's make sure we got that here so you can see it. A couple items in here. I've got a laser uh, measuring tool from Bosch. Uh, this is the 165 foot uh, blaze. Works out great you know, if you're measuring to a ceiling, things like that. Got a GFCI tester. This pairs with another tool in the bag. We'll go over here in a bit. Some Klein tools. All right, this is actually a transmitter, as you can see, communicates with another tool. And let's see, we got this bag has meter pockets on the outside, but they call meter pockets at uh, Vito. So open this up. Got a clamp meter in here, a Klein CL800. Uh, and I prefer clamp meters. I've got the magnet on the back. It clips on so it can hang it by magnet. But I like clamp meters because you don't have to break into the circuit to find out what uh, the, the current is or the amps are, right? And this Klein uh, uh, is a pretty good meter, uh, not too expensive. Uh, it works out great. But I do prefer a clamp meter. Got a couple different test leads in here. I've got some alligator clips here. These are nothing unusual, just something I got on Amazon. I've got a set of test probes in here. These are fluke. I think they're called twist guards. I've got caps on there, but if you can take that off and you twist these, you'll see that that insulator goes up and down on both of these. So they're kind of long, but I, they're very, uh, very nice test leads. I like those. I've got a non-contact voltage tester on here, and I have two on the bag. This is made by Klein Tools. Okay. And this one also has, uh, of course, non-contact. I'll do non-contact first here. If I just turn that on, uh, you see it beeps when you get near. I think I just silenced it. <laughs> Hit it once. You can see you can test for voltage. It's also got an infrared tester as well to give you temperature. So, and it's got a little laser on it. You can see that on the bag, the laser pointing there. So it's good for pointing out things too as well. But, but I like this because it can take temperature quickly, give you a um, a good temperature reading so it's a nice uh, non-contact voltage tester I've got another uh, temperature tester in here UEI 
tester. So this is uh, looks like it's that uh, PDT650 pocket thermometer they call it. Very handy for uh, for testing. You've got the probe here on the back. You just push the probe out. It's got some magnets on it, so you can clip this magnetically to a vent if you're testing HVAC temperatures. Very nice. Uh, let's see what else do we have uh, in this pocket. I think that covers it. Um, going around the bag, I guess we'll grab these out. So this is a HVAC Klein HVAC 8 and one I like this tool because it, because it comes right out of the bag with um, a quarter inch. Uh, you can take a quarter inch nuts off or you can pop it out to five eighths and you can with one hand, you can spin this nut out and keep this out. I usually don't have to, but you know, but there you go. I can quickly have those two uh, sockets uh, uh, available, nut drivers at my disposal. Other side's got your standard Phillips screwdriver, some different tips in it, but a great multi-use screwdriver that I keep on outside the bag because it's so useful. Here's the other non-contact voltage tester. It's a Fluke uh, Volt Alert right there. You can see the ACA2. This one's great, you know, nice and small. I've had this for quite some time. Tones out when you touch something or senses something uh let's see so going around the bag i'll just keep going around this way we have on this side here i've got a uh, pocket knife here it's a milwaukee uh, fastback this is the compact version of their knife okay they make a larger one it's very popular but i like the smaller one fits in the pocket better uh, of course that's the idea behind this knife is that you have this fast blade deployment right? Uh, blade can be taken out quickly. Most folks are familiar with these, uh, so quick blade changes, but it fits well in the bag. I like it. Got a flashlight here. This is a Rofus uh, R3 flashlight. I've had this for some years. The big selling point for this light for me was that it has a, uh, an angling head, so you can angle that down or any, anywhere you want. Uh, magnetic base, uh, regular 18650 rechargeable battery, magnetic or wireless charging so not available anymore unfortunately but but it was a uh, just a, a great a great light so i keep it on the bag what else do we have on this side let's see if I can get this here set up for you all right so got a tape loop here that comes with the bag all kinds of tape here i put on uh, bl uh, blue painters tape this is equivalent to duct tape it's made by the gorilla glue people so it's like a small roll of uh duct tape uh, red vinyl electrical tape scotch brand this is a uh, black vinyl tape scotch as well i like to use scotch for electrical tape if uh, you know buy something cheaper i'm using it for something other than electrical this is a uh, uh, regular teflon tape for plumbing uh, i've got a uh, screw cap here this is just a, a magnet i put on here i'll probably take it off you'll see i have some others but you can see it's just a screw catch this is a uh, aerator removers i'll probably move this somewhere but it came with this ring but it's for removing aerators from uh, faucets. And I just came this way, I threw it, threw it on here. Got a uh, Olite uh, Baton 3 flashlight here. I like to keep on the outside of the bag. It's, uh, I like this clip, you know, you can clip it on your hat and wear it as a hat light. It's also a great flashlight in its own right. Uh, just excellent light, very bright if you crank it up. Very handy, definitely use that and carry that instead of a hat light. Here in this bottom pouch, uh, I've got a laser level, level from Bosch. Okay, this one is, uh, you know, puts out a level. They've got, there's probably stuff out there now that's better than this, but, but this Bosch works out pretty well, uh, or has over the years. I may replace it with something here, but I've had it for a while. Hard part with this Bosch is getting, you have to like get the bubble here and the level, you know, centered, and that can be a challenge on a wall if you're trying to level shelving or something, but, but it comes in handy for that. Uh, the other thing we have here is a Klein work light. And I think I've shown this on the channel before. Excellent light because the light can have several different ways in which you can mount it. Uh, you know, it can, this light can stand up, right, on a, on a surface, a flat surface. You can hang the light. It's got a little carabiner hook, so you can, you can break in and right there and hang the light. And uh, the light is also magnetic, so you can magnetically attach it. So three ways to mount this light. And on top of that, let's say you were to hang this light, it, it pivots. So if you needed to pivot it out a little bit or pivot it in, you know, or if you needed it to go straight down and shine one way or the other, it's just an excellent uh, light and articulates really well for work. Uh, also has a uh, USB-A port here for charging up your phone, and then you can charge it up with micro USB. But, and I think if you just hold this button down, it'll tell you the charge level. You see I've got three lights, 
So it's one bar down. So excellent light from Klein. All right, what do we have? We have this other pouch here. You know, this is, uh, so it's just two side pouches, basically the same on this bag. So we cut into here, we have a socket set. I've got an impact socket set from Makita. Uh, and I've got two here, one standard, one metric. And so, yeah, the red is metric, the blue is a standard. That comes in very handy. Uh, I can use it with uh, my impact. Uh, this is the other part of that GFCI tester I was telling you about. So there's that GFCI tester I have from Klein. It can be mounted right here in the uh, base of this, like that. And the idea with this is it's a circuit break, breaker finder. You know, you turn it on and you take this to a, a breaker box or breaker panel and you could sniff for this uh, transmitter wherever you got it plugged in and it will tell you if, uh, you know, which breaker is uh, active. So very nice uh, tool there from Klein's. I like that combo. What else is in here? I have some small zip ties. So I'll put those right back in there. And let's see, what else? I've got a Sawzall blade. We'll see where that comes in here in a little bit. This one's for uh, metal. That's a Milwaukee branded one. Uh, I also have some drill bits in here. These are concrete drill bits, Bosch. And again, just assortment of bits I keep in this bag. Anything else? I think that's it for that pocket. All right, then we'll just look at the back of the bag here real quick. So the back, they have this, this pocket here. And I put this uh, storage container from Husky. Just a clear storage container. I know a lot of folks use this container. Very handy, small, compact. I just keep an assortment of things in here. I have uh, some different size screws. Um, some wire nuts, some Waco nuts. If you don't know, these are sort of a replacement for wire nuts. They come in pretty handy, these Wagos. That's what's in this box. And then I have a hammer here by Estwing. Okay. Made in the USA. So that's a plus, right? Can't beat that. 16 ounce hammer. I like a lighter weight hammer because I want to keep the bag lighter. Um, and, uh, I, I think that this one is a good Good fit for the bag. It's also a good fit for other VTO bags. So, uh, but I like to I like a a 16 ounce hammer. Now let's get into the heart of the bag here. Now, one thing that's nice about this bag that I think is great is that you know it's something where you can get into this bag very quickly, right? It's got you know on the side there's zippers here. All right, and you could zip it shut. I don't. Uh, if you were trying to travel in somewhere, you might zip it up to make sure nothing fell out, but uh, somewhere you don't typically travel, but I don't zip them up. Pull this Velcro back, flip the top back, and you're in the bag. So we get right in here, and let's see. Well, we can, I want to just look at the top here real quick. On the top of this bag, there is a metal um, plate, and and one thing that's good about that is you can mount like that Klein light that I have. You can take that Klein light, okay? You have this metal plate at the top. You, you can take that Klein light or any magnetic light and magnetically attach to this metal plate. Well, I've taken these rare earth magnets and put them on here. Uh, I keep these here as a screw catch uh, is the idea on this side, right? Put, put screws on there. I keep bits over here, assortment of bits, all kinds, small, big, just a quick way to, to throw bits uh, when, when they're not in use. So I do like this plate. What I like about this bag too is that, you know, most Vito bags, this would be the top of the bag. The bag would open up, you know, the flap would flap down and this would be your top. But the cool thing about this bag is the top actually opens up. It falls back fully open, making this a very much like an open top bag which uh, is arguably the best bag, an open top, because you can get into an open top from any side or any angle. So uh, that's why I think this bag is kind of unique because it combines, this bag combines the best of, of a closed top and the best of an open top bag. You can get to this bag from, from all three sides or really all four sides because you could reach over from the back. But because this top flips back, you've got access in here immediately. You're not going to two different sides of the bag like you do with the, the Tech LC or the, uh, uh, the Tech MCT. So what do we have in the bag? Um, let's see. So here's a, a Milwaukee uh, uh, jab saw or drywall saw. Really just a hand saw. I've got a uh, Diablo blade in here. Uh, looks like a wood blade we have there that I've, I've gotten this. It's great because, you know, this blade can be removed. It's a standard Sawzall blade, a reciprocating saw blade. So this can go in your reciprocating saw and you can find these blades anywhere. It's not like you have to hunt around for them. So 
Um, it's just excellent from that perspective that the blade can be used across devices. Uh, excellent tool to have. I like this too because if you, typical drywall saw, if you, you look at those, they're, they have a wooden handle that'll be mounted and it's always out. The blade's always out. It's jabbing the bag. You know, uh, I don't, that's what I like about this is it really just kind of gets out of the way and allows you to, uh, to use this. So very compact, very nice tool there from Milwaukee. I keep a standard notepad here just to take notes for measurements, that sort of thing. I've got a uh, Red Devil uh, putty knife here. This is the flexible kind. You know, they make a stiffer kind. Uh, stiff, and you can see there's any hardware store, the stiff or the soft. I like the flexible better. I've got a uh, hide five in one here, typically a painter's tool, but I find that you can use this for any type of scraping or any kind of work that you're doing. Just an excellent all around tool. And let's see what else. Uh, typical, just a regular tire pressure gauge. I've got a stubby screwdriver in here, multi stubby from, from Klein. That's uh, uh, very handy, you know, you've got different bits on it, you flip it around and get your flat bit. So instead of carrying multiple stubbies, I just carry one. I've got a pair of flush cutters in here. These are Crescent. And these work great, cutting zip ties or small wiring, that sort of thing. Got to keep a couple pins in here. Both are Sharpies. I find these work better for me than any other type of marker. Uh, this seems to stay, they don't dry out really. So I keep silver. I, I use this a lot for writing on black things like filters, things like that. And of course, uh, regular black Sharpie marker. Uh, ink pen, mechanical pencil. I've got a step bit in here. This is a DeWalt step bit. It's tested out very well uh, as to be the, the best step bit. I wanted to get the best because, you know, they, they're expensive and I wanted to make sure that it lasted. So this one's been proven to be the toughest tef, uh, um, step bit there is. I keep a little bit of standing cloth in here, just a small piece here to uh, sand when I need to. Small task. Uh, this is a, I uh, got this from Harbor Freight, Pittsburgh Pro. It's a, a nested set of Torx wrenches, right? So you have your nested Torx assortment of sizes. I think it's uh, pretty handy, gives you a pretty good leverage, very small form factor for having some Torx wrenches on you. Garbage dispens disposal wrench, I don't think that needs any explanation other than, you know, if you don't know, you put it on the bottom of the garbage disposal and it allows you to turn the motor if the motor's jammed. There's a, a place on the bottom that you can put that. I got assortment here of picks, had these for a long time. Uh, I keep these on one side and I keep a regular pick over here where I can find it quickly. I keep this guy by himself, just a standard pick. Here I've got some right-angled uh, screwdrivers. Don't use these a lot, but there is a time when you need to get into a very tight quarters, you know, sometimes under a sink, uh, where these come in very handy. Got the uh, Klein flip bit here. I think I've done a video on this before, but it's kind of like a Malco bit where the bits, all the bits can be flipped around. So I can just flip there. I just flip from one quarter inch bit to a five sixteenths on that end now, or you can pull the bits here from the shank and take them up top. It's got a magnet in the top of it. Uh, pretty handy magnet here. I know some folks have said the magnet doesn't stand very well. That's I think been a challenge with this tool. It can also be used to drive uh, bits, you know, these small bits here. Another thing that's kind of neat about it. You just kind of have to go out to a second click on that and you can see that now I can drive drill bits. What else do we have? Uh, I've got a, uh, this is screw retrieval, extendable, nice and small and compact. I like that because of that. I've got a uh, plastic uh, razor blade here. This is, um, you know, it works out great for uh, removing things off objects, uh, paint or what have you without damaging the work. Uh, if you haven't seen these, they are excellent. And of course, this will fit in any razor blade holder, that razor blade on that. Along that theme, I have a plastic putty knife. Uh, takes doesn't take up much space. So I put it in the bag. I find it works better for, for moving mud or spreading mud because it's very, very flexible. Excellent uh, little tool there to have. I've got a caliper here, a small one, made by Graz. I'm not sure how you would say that, but that's available online. Amazon definitely has that, and it's, uh, I think it's brass, but just great to have on you to, to measure uh, and use as a small caliper. It takes up very little space. Saw that one day and thought, hey man, that's, that's going to be good to have on you. Um, let's see, I've got, this is a 
basically my long shank screwdriver that I carry. It's a Klein Tools screwdriver. This thing has more than one purpose though. Interesting there. I love the fact that it's made in USA. See that? <laughs> and usually the Klein Tools made in USA, well, they're, you know, they're generally built better when they're made in the USA by far. And so you can see this guy is a long shank screwdriver. So if I pull this cullet back, I can extend this driver out to a line here for have a long shank filled screwdriver. If I need flap, I just flip it around and now I've got a flat screwdriver, right? Whatever length I want. Um, but it's also long shank as well, of course. All right. But like I said, it has a dual purpose in this bag. This handle can also combine with anything in this bag. So I, that's a quarter inch hex. All right. So I could turn anything in here. That's a quarter inch hex. If we, uh, were to look through here real quick and find something that we could show like i don't know any bit i'll just grab this here and show this milwaukee bit fits right in there right i can drive that bit okay i can also use this bit in this craftsman cordless screwdriver all right already got one in it right i want to take it out pop it out of the cullet put it up top pop this bit in right this is a craftsman cordless screwdriver it's nice led lit uh, the green light means it's fully charged when you see that here in the back and it rarely, it stays green pretty much most of the time. Uh, but excellent screwdriver, doesn't have a, a large handle. It's a nice normal size handle. It's not too bulky, too big. Great for repetitive work. That's the key here, repetitive work. And it will not over torque. You know, it, once the screw's tight, it stops. Excellent uh, from that perspective. But these bits can of course fit the Craftsman. They fit in here, okay? Or they can be in, put into this impact driver. I've got a Milwaukee, fuel this is the surge version of their 12 volt impact or m12 impact as you can see i can just insert that right on the end and i'm using the same bit across all three of these tools right so that's the theme with this bag is that i'm able to make use of uh, that everything in this bag is interchangeable as much as possible everything works together in the bag is the idea but this is a great uh, impact uh, if you haven't seen this uh, of course it's got a uh, speed settings here one through three and it's got a self tapper over there i leave it on two a lot i find it's just this helps you not strip out screws and gives you more control over the work and this is the surge version which means it has hydraulic uh, fluid up here in the nose so it's very quiet once the impact hammer starts on this so i've also put the uh you see that i got the black milwaukee rubber boot on there but this tool is uh very much all about control i mean you have enormous amount of control when you run this tool and uh, very quiet, very little vibration in the handle, uh, and control was more important than power. You know, when it comes to any power tool, you, you don't want to damage what you're working on. Uh, it's kind of the whole point, right? But, uh, but it still has a lot of power, bottom line. So excellent uh, tool there from Milwaukee. Probably the best tool they make, really. So let's see what else we have in the bag. I have a uh, demolition screwdriver from Irwin. I looked at a lot of these. I like Irwin because they have the, uh, they tell you right on the end here, if you're doing uh, you know, storing the, the tool vertically, you can tell that it's a slotted screwdriver right from the top. This isn't painted on or printed on, so it's not going to wear away. It's, it's, it's actually stamped into the metal. And of course, the demolition screwdriver, the metal runs from this tip all the way through the handle. So you can, you can pound on the end of this uh, uh, screwdriver with a hammer. So that's what this is for. Relatively new because I had another one I beat up, but excellent demolition screwdriver. What else do we have here? I've got a punch here. This is a Williams P26, made in the USA, 3 16th uh, punch. This is great for uh, lining up holes uh, uh, or driving pins out. That's why I picked this particular one, this particular size. Williams, if you didn't know, is a snap-on company. This is just a uh, 3 8 drive extension. Uh, so this is uh, nothing special about this guy. I will check here and see. I think it's... 10 inches, right? Just to be sure. Yeah, that's a 10 inch extension there. We'll look at that here a little bit more. One of the things, I'll just get into those sockets here. So I showed you the sockets earlier, right? Everything I keep in the bag is 3 8 So this is 3 8 Of course, the drive extension is 3 8 So that means, like I said earlier, everything works together. So for example, you know, I keep a ratchet in here and that I can just a regular Craftsman pair headed ratchet, all right? I use this because it's not too big. It's, you know, it's, it's a good size for the bag. You know, it works pretty good, decent quality. Um, but I can use this, of course, with any of these sockets, right? So everything in the bag has a 3H drive on it, just like on this tip here, okay? So 
that, that way it all works together. So if I wanted to drive one of these sockets, of course, I can use that ratchet, okay? Right, ratchet of the impact. Take your pick. If I pull out one of these impact sockets, because we're on the ratchet. So that's the idea. Everything in this, in this tool bag is interoperable or, or interchangeable in this tool bag setup. What else do we have here? We have, let's go here, this Klein. Got a Klein Lyman's uh, pliers here. I, I inherited these uh, from my grandfather. They are, they've been an excellent pair of uh, Lyman pliers, much better than what I had before, but it's an HD 213 uh, 9NE is the exact model number there, but boy, they cut great. They have the thicker vinyl dip, hand dips, grips on it. Excellent pair of uh, Lyman pliers. I don't use them that much anymore because I now have these, uh, I've been trying these uh, Milwaukee uh, uh, multi-tool, basically. Uh, they're wire strippers with multiple features, and you can see here that they've got this duck bill on the end, which gives you a feature of the Lyman pliers that I think makes them uh, you know, a very interesting tool. And I find that I can, I can twist wire, you know, just fine with the Milwaukee tool. And uh, you're getting multiple tools in one, right? So you get the Lyman tool feature here. You can strip wire here on the wire strippers. You can see it can do solid and stranded, okay? You can cut off screws like you can with a lot of better wire strippers. Uh, and then you get a lot of leverage here because the handles are a little bit longer. And, of course, they cut wire. Excellent cutters in here. The cutters are curved, so they do an excellent job right, of cutting wire. So it's been an excellent pair of wire strippers. And like I said, it's, it's great when you're in a hot act or something and, and you can uh, just have this one tool in you and you're not sorting and looking for other tools. So also have a, a, a Cobra pliers in here from Knipex. I think these are the 10 inch Cobra pliers, quick adjustment. Cobras, of course, they have the notch in the jaw, as you can see, that's typical for, for Knipex. They like to put a notch here so it can fit a, a hex nut, okay. That's what makes them sort of different than the uh, channel lock pliers. I have a pair, another pair of Knipex. Uh, uh, these are the pliers wrench, also 10 inch, or I think 250 millimeters, depending on how you want to reference that. Uh, I have the, uh, I have these uh, protecting jaws on here right now. I keep these, uh, you know, I keep these up here in this pocket. But those jaw protectors slip right on, and they, uh, if you're working on work that you're trying not to damage, like chrome or something, that, that comes in handy. But that's a Kinepex pliers wrench, quick adjustment, excellent tool. Allows you to, you know, because sort of like a, I also keep a standard, really that's what it is, as an adjustable wrench. I have an adjustable Craftsman wrench in here uh, that was uh, forged and made in the USA. So I've had this one for a while, okay. But this Craftsman, uh, you know, the, the great thing about this is you can get torque on this. So if I'm, you're working on something, you can leverage down and get more torque on whatever fastener you're trying to turn than you can with adjustable wrench. And the other great thing about it is, is of course, the, the quick adjustment. Uh, but uh, beyond that, you can also sort of cam out. So you can tighten something up, open up the jaws, kind of round back over the, the nut, tighten back up, come around again. So you can cam out and, and continue to turn on something. So there's some advantages over this with this tool. But I keep both of them in here together because if you need to turn, a, you need an opposing force, you need to have both of these tools, right? So if you have a nut, on one side here and a nut over here and you need to turn in two different directions, right? We want to keep these, uh, the counter force here between the two tools. That's why I have both in the bag. Along those lines, I have two smaller uh, Craftsman wrenches. Uh, let's see, both of these are, yep, made in the USA. So I've had these for a while too. Just for smaller work right there. What else? Keeping on this Knipex theme, I have a Knipex pair of Co-bolts, which I believe stands for compact bolt cutters. All right, great for cutting, uh, well, <laughs> screws and, and that sort of thing. Uh, heavier stuff, heavier metal. You can see I have the notch version here. Got a notch right here on the cutters. And the idea there is that you can cut, you know, bigger wire can fit in here closer to the fulcrum and it will uh, keep the wire from pushing out as you, as you crimp or uh, clamp down to cut the wire. So the wire will be less likely to, to push out the jaws. So these compact bolt cutters have been uh, um, excellent. Very good for heavier stuff when you're not trying to damage your other tools. Got a pair of Knipex uh, uh, long nose pliers here. Okay. Uh, these are the eight inch pliers. I like eight inch. I've used six inch for some time and didn't realize what I was missing out on. Eight inch is really the way to go for long nose pliers, uh, it's a good balance. 
All right, I've got just a standard uh, pocket screwdriver here, flat pocket screwdriver. Got a bit extension here uh, by Irwin. This one, I think, is um, probably 12 inches. It is, 12 inch bit extension from Irwin. That's, uh, again, same theme. It can be worked with multiple tools, right? Goes with the impact. It can go with, um, you could turn it by hand if you wanted to. There are scenarios where you might want to do that. I can take this driver, put it on. Yeah, get it on there. Yeah, and there, now I'm turning it by hand. What's great about this Irwin, what I like about it is, it's got this locking tip, okay? So you can just pull this ring down to unlock a bit that you might put in there, whatever you might put in there. I'm going to um, use an example here, just something that fits in here, not what you typically do, but you can drive this. The bit's not gonna pull out. So if you're working with something like a paddle bit, I was working with one one time behind a wall between two studs and a stud panel, trying to drill a hole and you could lose your bit up in the wall once you get extended out. And let's say you're trying to return, you drilled through and you're trying to pull back, pretty key to have a locking bit on there. So that's why this specific one is in the bag. Very important. Got a piece of Romex in here. Uh, just uh, it's 12 gauge Romex. I keep this in here uh, because if I need to make pigtails for a wire and a receptacle or something, I can just strip this back, pull out a couple of wires here, the neutral and the hot, and uh, I can make up some wires. I keep another pair down here as well. Just a couple of regular wires here outside of the Romex. Be surprised when that comes in handy. I've got a flat screwdriver here. I used this to adjust a gas valve once and it had to be straight to fit into the hole. So because of that need and it came in handy during that time, I kept the screwdriver in the bag. Got a torpedo screwdriver here. This is a Milwaukee. Works out great. Magnetic on one side. Good little torpedo style level to have on you. Got a couple of Bondus hex wrenches here or Allen wrenches, right? Bondus can be purchased online. Made in the USA, that's a big plus. These have worked great. Uh, they have the uh, ball ends on them so that uh, you can angle these if you need to. These are the stubbies. Uh, that means that uh, it's shorter right here at this piece, right? This particular part of the uh, tool. So you can buy them longer. If I were buying them again, I might buy these a little longer. I find sometimes I'd like a little more standoff right here on these uh, tips. They can be a little tight to get them to fit sometimes. Harbor Freight wire brush. Good, not too small, not too big wire brush to have in the bag. All right, let's see. We have a pair of uh, shears here. These are cobalt. And I used to keep a pair of scissors in the bag, a standard pair of scissors. I replaced them with these. They do the job of a pair of scissors, but they can also cover heavier things. Um, so like something you might use a pair of 10 snips for. So basically it comes in handy in a lot of situations where you need something heavier. I got a pair of Irwin uh, vice grips here. These are the uh, long nose vice grips. I replaced the standard ones with these. I thought it'd be handier to have these in the bag. Uh, to get the extended reach and still serve the same purpose of uh, uh, the standard vice grips. I've got a uh, 90 degree uh, end here for the uh, impact or drill. Basically makes it into a, a 90 degree or right angle drill. So works out great. I think DeWalt, they make an excellent one. I think this is the pro version. It's got metal housing. Also the DeWalt was tested out. It performed really well. Got a uh, precision screwdriver here from Klein, right? I think some people call it a thermostat screwdriver. You can see the number there, the 32581. Different bits in it, uh, you know, smaller, flat, and Phillips uh, bits, and the screwdriver that flips around. Excellent, very handy. Inspection mirror here, also extends out. Keep that in the bag. Uh, let's see here, I've got a center punch here made by Sterrett. So this is made in the USA center punch. Excellent uh, tool to have. Uh, you can back this off to get it, you know, to have more uh, punch or less punch. So, you know, if you figure out where you want to make your mark, put your center punch in here and it'll punch down automatically, leaves a divot in the wood. Now you got a place for your drill bit to start. So when you go to drill, when you go to drill, your drill bit will fall right in there. So. Stare at center punch, excellent tool. Speaking of drill bits, I keep uh, an assortment, just a few in here. Uh, the one I just had was a concrete drill bit here, longer one, this came in handy one time I was using it, kept it in the bag, as sort of a standard concrete bit, start a hole for you, and you can drill in after that. I've got uh, 
three drill bits up here. Just again, just usually to drill pilot holes. I just keep some standard bits in here to have something in the bag. You'll notice that all these have the uh, hex base on it. That's so they can fit right into the impact. So I can use this impact as either a drill or an impact driver. That's why they all are hex. So, and of course they'll fit into a standard drill as well. Making sure all the uh, tools are interchangeable in here. I've got, it looks to be just a standard uh, quarter inch hex drive on here. Uh, must have had used this at one time and just kept it in the bag. You'll see here I've got a uh, 3H drive here for the impact. All right? So I can turn these uh, sockets we talked about earlier, 3 8 3 inch extension here for the uh, ratchet. This is just a half inch driver. All right, I showed you the 3 8 that's the half inch. Let's see what else we got here. Got a small, short Malco uh, flip bit driver. Can't beat Malco, good stuff. I kind of, I do prefer the longer Malcos though. But this one's in the bag. Keep a, it looks like it just, I keep, I hang my Torx bit off of that. Probably a T25, yep, T25 bit. Over here I also have a, uh, um, this is a countersink. I think it's, uh, yeah, half inch countersink. And that's, I can just, the idea here is I can just countersink as much as I need to or want to. All right, I have three punches in here that I keep in the bag. Some different sizes here. These are Stanley punches made in the USA. I've had these for some time. Got a pair of uh, Knipex twin grips here. And basically the twin grips are like a slip joint plier, your standard slip joint pliers. And it's got several different settings, maybe five different settings or so that you can adjust. You can see the teeth there a little bit on the side, a lot of settings. But the twin grips also add the benefit of having uh, this uh, threading uh, switched up here on the end the other way. And they put a, a mouth here in the end. So the idea is that you can remove screws uh, that might have the head stripped off. So I can just maybe illustrate here real quick. So if a head stripped off a screw, right, the idea is you can get behind it. You got a picture of the head being off here, but you can grab that screw and still back it out even though the head's been knocked off. Knipex twin grips. Got a regular clamp here. I've got a few uh, different ones of these, but good for clamping something you need to hold into place or, or to uh, clamp off a hose, uh, like a, for a fuel line or something like that. Got a Craftsman Bastard file here, just for six inch. It's just for regular uh, filing, small jobs. Pair of longer zip ties in the bag. I got a toothbrush here just for basic cleaning items up. Goes along with that wire brush, I guess. For bits, I've got a whole set of bits here from uh, Harbor Freight, and I use these primarily, I mean, there's different ones in here, but I use these pretty much for the uh, Torx bits they have in here, security Torx, and the hex bits they have here, right? So they got some, yeah, they got the Allen, or the, the, or the hex or Allen style uh, bits, and you got the Torx bits, so. And I, so this used to come with these uh, bits. I think they might not anymore. They might just give you one of these. Anyway, I, I don't remember if I got one or it came with both because I bought more than one of these. But I like to take two of them together to kind of keep those bits in place. Have a tendency to want to fall out. And that's how I store them to make sure they don't, I don't lose them. In the top here, what do we have? I have a knife sharpener here, Smith's knife sharpener. It can do fine and coarse thread. It's also got a, I think a, a file here for filing like serrated blades, things like that. But yeah, I find this is an excellent portable knife sharpener to quickly get, uh, to put a, an edge back on a blade and doesn't take up much space. Got some plumber's grease here, right? Or silicone grease for plumbing work. Let's see, what else do we have in here? I've just got a regular Bic lighter, standard Bic lighter. Got a, uh, a gauge here, made in the USA Craftsman by chance. Again, I've had that a while. But for gapping spark plugs, things like that. These are the jaw protectors for that pliers wrench that we talked about earlier, I believe. If I can get them out of here. So there's the protecting jaws for that. I've got a couple pieces of uh, removal tools here for shark bite. Or, you know, these uh, compression fittings. Different brands are out there, but I've been using shark bite. Got one for three quarter inch, one for half inch to remove shark bite fittings. Got a set of uh, 
razor blades in here, Milwaukee, which has been the, sh they're the sharpest blades. Stanley is a, are really good blades as well. The Stanleys probably hold up longer and are, are, are also sharp. Of course, you know, the sharper the blade, the quicker they wear out. This is just a regular valve stem, you know, Schrader valve remover, valve stem puller. Just happen to have this tire pressure gauge checker in here. You know, you can check along the bottom. Something they were giving out at Costco. I've got a set of uh, protectors here for the Cobra pliers, so jaw protectors. And again, the idea here is if you're working on something that's uh, you're not trying to damage, like chrome or something like that, for whatever reason, you need to grip it. You don't want these teeth to mar at the finish of what you're working on. Uh, we've got these protecting jaws there for that. I keep a silico pack up here. Hopefully that cuts down on some of the humidity or moisture in the bag that uh, causes your tools to corrode. Uh, this bag has a hook in it, so you can pull this hook out on this strap and hang the bag up, you know, to get it up a ladder or to hang it on a wall or what have you. So it's very handy that's in there. Uh, pretty clever that Vito, Vito put that in the bag. All right, so I think that's everything inside the bag, except I do have this. I have just a regular terminal cleaner for battery terminals, right? Opens up, get these in any auto parts store. Pretty standard stuff. And I have another step bit in here, Harbor Freight step bit, bigger than the DeWalt. All right, so what else do we have here? Let's, let's go in the top of the bag. There is a pouch, okay? I use this, I don't use it a whole lot, but I have some, some items in here real quick we can go through. This is a uh, connecting uh, piece here for the tester. I can take this tester from Klein, I can put it in here, and I can get a set of test or alligator clips here on the leads to test bare wire when you're not testing receptacles, so this comes in handy for that. I've got a uh, pipe cutter here made by Rigid. I like Rigid stuff. All st Rigid stuff's great. Their pipe wrenches are excellent. Good little pipe cutter. This is a uh, 3 16 to 5 16 outer diameter, but that's a, a good pipe cutter to have on you if you're only going to have one. Just got a regular shop towel here. I keep a couple of mechanics gloves in here in case something's really dirty. Keep a pair there. I've got a pair of, uh, well, first I've got a socket here. Uh, you can make a socket into a receptacle, light socket, for testing or if you need a power somewhere, uh, attic or somewhere where you're at. I've got a pair of uh, just uh, alligator clips here to jump things together, right? Good pair there. And I keep a pair of Band-Aids here. Oftentimes you cut yourself. I just bought this. I refill it <laughs> with Band-Aids. Uh, but you know, you cut yourself at the worst time a lot of times, but yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it folks. So there you have it. That's the entire tool bag, uh, setup that I'm currently using in this Vito Pro Pack TP XXL. Um, I would welcome any ideas that you guys have, uh, or any thoughts. I, uh, I'm always, it's something that's always evolving and changing. Uh, so with that, I appreciate you joining us today. Please remember to like comment and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.